we didn't catch the crashes that we used to catch before. So if we grow the community on the nightly channel, we don't uh, we don't catch them uh, on the um, uh, on on the raw. So it's faster. Um, then you talked about automation. Uh, a lot of the crashes that we have, they are specific to the configuration of the people. Uh, graphic cards, uh, antivirus, uh, add-ons, uh, tons of things like the matrix is gigantic. So uh, everything that we know, we test uh, automatically. But uh, what we don't know, we cannot have tests for. And that's what we are looking for. And, and now we have just uh, landed the electrolysis. And electrolysis multi, multi processes, multi multi processes is on nightly now. And we have quantum coming. Uh, that's a lot of groundwork, like important changes, like hundreds of thousands of lines of code that's all going to land. And uh, we will need this feedback uh, very, very, very early. Um, does it answer your question? Cool. <laughs> I, I will be available most of the time at the booth, at the Mozilla booth in uh, Building K, so don't hesitate to talk to, with me in French, Spanish, English. Uh, Pascal, can, uh, it's still working now because we have a laptop. Can I use your laptop? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I can't use the mic. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's good. This is the thing we have. The other one. <laughs> and then I'll turn it off. So we're going to get started. We're already five minutes over. Um, 
couple of quick things, please use all the empty seats that you can in the middle, squeeze in, make room at the edges, we're going to have more people coming in just to cause as little disruption as possible. Plenty of room at the back, don't stand in the aisles if possible. Um, if you're new to the room, we have a room code of conduct, check it out, bit.ly, mazdem slash mazdem coc, uh, as I said, it's unique to this room, separate from the fazdem code of conduct, so have a quick look when you can, please. Um, I'm going to introduce our next speaker, um, Alex, Alex Lakatos, um, his friends call him Laka. Uh, but for some reason he's not fond of that. Um, he's a JavaScript developer by day and a Mozillian by night. Um, he wears many hats. Um, he's a reps council member and he's a tech speaker. And uh, little known fact, in his misguided youth, he got a casino dealer license. So uh, over to you, Alex. Take it away. Thank you. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm going to... And I'm gonna take a seat because I'm not as young as I uh, like to think. I want to talk today about SAP of DevTools and uh, some tips and tricks I use in my daily life and sometimes in my nightly life uh, to, to, to develop websites. So, how many of you in the room are web developers? Yes, yes. Okay, good, good. So, most of you. Uh, I'm gonna. If, if, if you have any questions, I'm going to be outside after this. I'm going to try to make it on time, though, so uh, let, let's get started. So how would you open developer tools? This is just a, like a, a small little demo page I'm using. I'm shamelessly plugging my blog here, even though it has one, only one article. So how would you use the, how, how do you open the developer tools? Most people go right click and then there's inspect element in here somewhere. But that opens up like just the inspector on the element you clicked. There's another way you can go to tools web developer and then pick your, uh, pick your tool from there. Let's start with web console. Um, Good. So uh, I'm, I'm starting with the web console just because this was the first and I always go there. But I want to show you Inspector first. Uh, the whole idea behind it is my, my, my blog is buggy and I kind of want to fix my button here. Uh, if I want to do that, I have to select my button. It's kind of, I'm not really sure which one is my button. There's more elements. Uh, but I have this little search field here uh, that helps me out with CSS selectors. And I'm using Material, so now this is going to be an MDL button. Now, if I try to search for it, it's going to show me my page has like four different buttons on it. Uh, so I'm gonna cycle through them until I get the one I want. Okay, so now I have my uh, now I have my button. Uh, come on, screen size. No luck. No luck. Good. Uh, so I can see my CSS the, the CSS for my button right here. It's not the color I'm, I want it to be. So I'm going to try to look in here for uh, for colors, basically. Uh, now there's a lot of CSS, right? So I, I I really don't know which one of them is the one I'm looking for. But uh, trying to find the instance of color is going to take me some time. But I have this uh, filter in input here, and I can just say highlight color for me. And then everything that has to do with color is neatly highlighted for me. This is, uh, seeing as how it looks orange, I'm going to guess this is my, uh, my, my button here. Now, I want to make it red like every link on my site. So I'm going to just go and say red. Uh, I do happen to work in a, in a company that's really fond of their style guides. Uh, and I can't just say red in my, uh, in my CSS. I have to have a hex color. But I have no idea what the representation for hex right here. So I'm going to have to shift click on the little, little dot there and see every other representation I have for that color. I'm going to settle on, uh, on hex. Now, if I look closely, and my designers do, Sadly, uh, I see that this red is a bit different from the red I have in the in the links. So I kind of want to 
figure out what's the exact color for that. I could go and select the links and search for color again, but that's, it takes a while. Uh, I'm lazy, so I'm gonna just click on this little button, a color picker appears in the palette. Uh, I'm not really good with this, so I have no idea what's the exact red shade, so I'm gonna just use color picker and try to pick the color from in here. And now I select my color, it has the representation I want, uh, there's up to four rep different representations in there. Uh, this only has three because that color doesn't have a name. It, um, I'm gonna just go with, with the representation. Uh, so I, I show you how to do HTML and CSS, like play, play around with that. Uh, but that's not all you do on the web, right? There's still JavaScript involved somewhere. And if I look at my uh, my console logs, I can see I have some issues with my title. It's not exactly what the, the session title is on the schedule. So if I want to fix that, I kind of have to figure out where this comes from. So I'm gonna go to the debugger. Uh, I have uh, a panel that shows me every JavaScript file that comes into play in the page. Uh, most of it comes off, off the internet, so I'm just going to look at my, uh, at my local files. But looking through it, it kind of has like 150 lines of code. I have to figure out where my console log is. So I have this search, um, search input. Uh, now, searching through one file wouldn't be really helpful for me, uh, unless I really, really knew my app well. But this, uh, this input has um, prefixes. So I can search through all files, uh, I can only search for a function definition or search in this file or directly go to a line. I'm gonna try to search in all files, so I need to prefix that and say console. And it's gonna show me, that's not the best idea. Let's see, dev tools. Okay, so it's gonna show me what exactly I said, dev tools in my code. If I go to that, uh, I'm gonna see my code. Now I want to kind of stop execution at this point and figure out what else is happening there. Uh, what I showed you so far is on par with other developer tools in the market. One of the things we're lacking for now is the ability to live edit code in debugger. So if I want to make changes, I'm gonna have to go back to my editor. Uh, but for that, let's just um, stop execution right here and see what's happening. When I, when I click on the, on the line number, uh, I, I get this breakpoint right here that I can toggle on, on or off. Uh, I'm gonna attempt the gods of Wi-Fi and do a refresh right now. Fingers crossed. Okay, uh, gods of Wi-Fi are with us. So I can uh, I can look at what's happening with my talk title. I have this the, the whole scope of it. Execution is stopped. Uh, there's nothing in the console because execution is stopped. I have a visual indicator that says, hey, there's something going on in this tab. You need to pay attention. And it shows me everything related to the, the JavaScript. Uh, that, that's running right there, uh, the instance of this. Uh, even, even me, which seems I'm undefined for now. Uh, if, if I want to stop this whole, uh, I, can, I can even make changes to objects that are happening in there, which is not the best idea ever. Uh, if I want to close this, uh, there's a simple way. I don't have to like figure out what's happening. I can either run, and it's gonna run my code through, I have the, the console on, or just um, untoggle the breakpoint, and that's it. Now, we've got HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? But that's not everything that happens when you do a web page. Most of my, uh, my websites have issues with the network transport, because, because the way uh, HTTP works, I'm never really sure how long it takes for my page to load. Like, I can figure out how big my page is, uh, but then how long it takes to actually get the, that code, that's not that easy. Uh, so we have the, the method tab here that shows you every request you make. I'm gonna try to uh, make this smaller. I can't. Uh, so, come on, come on, come on. Okay, so uh, you have you have here two different sizes. That's the, my biggest issue is. Uh, one of them is size it occupies in transport, and then the other one is size it occupies on disk. You're gonna see most of mine have the exact size. 
and that's because well I'm running off a local server uh, but the stuff I go online to get like my material CSS uh, the, the difference is, is is huge like six times the difference and that means I can really uh, tweak my website to take as little time to transport as humanly possible now if if I just do size, if I just optimize for size and compress, maybe JZIP, that's part of the problem. But the other part of the problem is there's something happening uh, during transport that I'm not really sure about. So I can inspect the whole request, headers, cookies, uh, responsive, and but that's not my uh, that, that's not my my issue. My issue is I have no idea how long it took to do anything. Uh, so let's look at something else analytics okay so this is a good example i'm uh, i'm getting google analytics right and if i look at what's happening right there it shows me every step of the http request and i see that um, connecting and sending and the whole transfer side took like really nothing whereas uh, I have a block connection. That means I have too many connections when I load my page, and it showed me it had to wait for maybe 70% of the time, just wait for a connection port to be available. And then once it got to the server, the server was kind of slow, and it made me wait uh, until it gave me a response. Now, if I own the server, I can uh, basically trim down the, the waiting time to as little as possible. And as for uh, block connections, it, I, I, uh, I make a lot of them, so I should stop. But I had no idea this was happening until I opened up my, uh, my timing span right there uh, to, to see what's happening. One of, the other, uh, one of the other things I do on a daily basis is deal with storage in one form or another. Uh, we've got um, a storage tab that has cache storage, cookies, and uh, IndexedDB. You have local and session storage, but I rarely use session storage, maybe local. Uh, but it shows you everything that you've got uh, in there. I don't use local storage on this one. I've only got cookies. Now, one of the problems I have with cookies is they used to track me, right? And if I want to change a cookie so I'm not tracked anymore, I have to write some JavaScript and find a way to execute it in the page, maybe use Grease Monkey or something like that. Or what I do is I just go to the storage inspector, um, go to the cookie, um, inspect, inspect the, the cookie, and then I can just say, no, no. Uh, and I changed my cookie in, in DevTools. It literally took 30 seconds to change my cookies. I didn't have to write fancy JavaScript for it. Uh, I, I do this as a personal browsing preference, and when I work, I work with cookies, so it helps me both ways. Now, everything I showed you is in, uh, in Firefox right now. This is the release version of Firefox. Uh, but some of the things in here, uh, so some of the things in DevTools don't come in, uh, in the regular version of Firefox for the next 16 weeks or something like that. Uh, so we have different versions for developers. Uh, I think Pascal mentioned the Dev Edition. Now the problem with Dev Edition is if Pascal gets his way with Nightly, he's going to kill Dev Edition. So I might as well use Nightly from now on uh, to, to, you, to do DevTools. Uh, let's power up nightly. Dev tools, okay. Uh, one of the things uh, that's not in the release version, I always like to at least check up what's happening with Dev tools because, well, in six weeks or eight weeks or whatever, they're going to come and uh, interfere with my work basically and my productivity. So I like to stay ahead of the curve. Uh, I always, whenever uh, there's a new nightly version, which Incidentally, is every day. <laughs> I go and try to see what changed in the developer tools. Uh, we bug the, like the commit messages and stuff like that. One of the things I noticed is uh, DevTools, for example, in this version has uh, something to do with. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, something to do with screenshots that it's not in the regular one, uh, so I can just screenshot the clipboard. I, I opened up the settings page because. I'm particular and I like to tweak my tools to suit my needs. Uh, one of the things I do and you can do with this is disable HTTP cache when this this whole heads up display is open. So when that tool is open, it disables HTTP, HTTP cache. Why I do this is 
my dog, for instance, is cached, so when I change something, I hit refresh like 20 times and nothing happens, and it's just driving me insane because cache is open. Now I, I, I can always make sure cache isn't open. Uh, you can do disable JavaScript and hardcore stuff like that. Not my, not my cup of tea. Uh, how many of you used Firebug before this? Okay, I'm a bit nostalgic, so every once in a while, I go to themes in here, and I choose the Firebug theme, just because uh, it always, when I did this talk uh, in, in front of, you know, I did it in front of students this week, it kind of confused the hell out of them what Firebug was, but the, the, the nostalgic in me kind of likes the idea of going old school once in a while. Have the power of the new dev tools and the look and feel of the old, uh, old Firebug. Uh, I think I'm quite on time and I have five minutes left for questions. If you guys have any questions, yes. Uh, when will the new uh, React That's a really good question. Uh, so the question was, when is DevTools HTML gonna land and uh, gonna land land the release. Uh, it's not. The whole idea is we created uh, we created the dev tools in an HTML way, React, Redux, and stuff like that. We have debugger and performance inspector, and the idea behind that is to move dev tools outside into an add-on so we can ship faster. The whole idea behind Mozilla is shipping faster right now, so, uh, and, and growing, and we, we want to move that into an add-on that can be shipped faster. So I don't think it's going to land on the tree. It's going to land in AMO, maybe. Any more questions? Yes? Uh, is Solid Flaps working? Because I'm checking uh, and currently no Solid Flaps. Uh, is Solid Maps working? Well, in the debugger it works for sure. Uh, in console it just landed in the latest version. So in console you might have to update or switch to nightly for it working. It means it's a bug then. Because uh, it landed, I'm sorry, this is a, if Pascal's around, please log a bug with him. So the, 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 the whole idea of source map is we had it in debugger for a really long time, but uh, a lot of people wanted to see it in console as well. So we landed the last iteration of Firefox, it should be there. Any more questions? Uh, if that's the case, thank you all, and I'm going to be around the booth if you have questions. Right